So the news is out, which really comes as no surprise to anyone. Caitlin Clark will be getting an eight figure contract a signature shoe with Nike. I think this was all expected. Doesn't surprise anyone, like I said, but nonetheless, there has been quite a backlash, if you will, uh, to the reports that this is going to be coming soon. Callie Lawson Freeman. Think about how stupid that is. There's a backlash that a basketball player is signing a shoe deal. Why is there, why the fuck is there even a backlash? Because you you moon crickets are crazy. And listen, Twitter smash on Shorty though. I ain't gonna lie, smash on her. What are we calling it now? X. I mean, that's the name, but I still refer to it Twitter. W Twitter. It's not even W Twitter anymore because can we just say that all week and for the last few weeks, months, it has been all about women's basketball. It has been exactly. about women's basketball, and it's it's gone to the mainstream. It's extended outside of W Twitter, and there are thanks to Caitlin Clark, you fucking ungrateful moon cricket s. Look, this moon cricket s doesn't even. I know she realizes that. I know this moon cricket s. Only reason all that is happening is because of Caitlin Clark. You ungrateful. Moon cricket s. There are some pros and cons to that, but everyone is reacting to the news of Caitlin Clark getting this shoe deal or a potential shoe deal, eight figures. Huh? Uh, there goes your oh, she won't make more money when she goes to the pros. Uh, but but listen, there's some backlash, and I, I will admit, I don't. I mean, I'm not mad. Shout out to Caitlin. Like this. Whatever. You're heated. You're pissed. Is incredible she deserves it and it's great and I, i'm happy that she's getting to move the game forward and also step but herself up financially for her future which is deserved but but it, it, it was I, I could not help it, Callie, in that when I saw this initially, I mean, I text you about it almost instantly when I saw it, and I thought I was late. I didn't realize that the news just dropped, but my initial reaction is, where is Asia Wilson's shoe deal? <laughs> Salute to Ken P, man. Ken P, man. Gift in the Ark Nation membership. Shout out to Ken P, man. Look, look at those crazy eyes. Them some crazy eyes. I give you a pass, Shorty. But them some crazy eyes. Look at them crazy eyes on that woman, man. Oh, crazy, man. Um, so they said, where's Asia Wilson's shoe deal? How come Aja, how come Aja Wilson don't have a shoe deal? Well, uh, ma'am, ma'am, Aja Wilson does have a deal with Nike. <laughs> she just don't have a signature shoe because she couldn't sell her signature shoe at her own family reunion. If Asia Wilson had a signature shoe, she couldn't sell any of them at her family reunion. Nike gave her a signature. They gave her a shoe. She doesn't have a signature shoe like Caitlyn. You want to know why? Because no one even bought this shoe. The Asia Wilson, the Cosmic Unity three times, this one right here. No one bought this. They gave her a test run with this shoe because they knew she didn't. Listen, Asia Wilson has been in the NBA, the WNBA since 2017. She has 800,000 
Instagram follow. <laughs> Yo, nobody's going to give a shoe deal to somebody with 800,000 Instagram followers. Press one. 800,000 Instagram followers. This girl has 800,000 Instagram followers. No one's giving a shoe deal to somebody with 800,000 Instagram followers, man. Stop this, man. Yo, video, random IG models got two, three. Yo, this girl, they gave her a shoe, not a signature shoe, but they put her name on the shoe, gave her a shoe. So she got a contract with Nike. No one bought this shoe. Her mother didn't even buy a pair. Her mother didn't buy a pair. <laughs> Followers. Yo, baby, you've been in the league since 2017. Let's see what her engagement is like. Let's see what her engagement is like. Oh, she got that shit turned off. You can't even see. Okay. So she got pretty decent engagement. She got um, 14,000 likes on this one. Look, she's on her IG page advertising Nike gear. I want y'all to remember that. She's on her IG page advertising Nike gear. So Nike has her advertising their gear on her IG page. Racist Nike. Racist Nike has her. <laughs> and listen, man, she's a very good basketball player. But baby. We're a little late in the game. Oh, she unapologetic too. The unapologetic. Moment of the day. The reason why you are here today, Miss Asia Wilson. <laughs> and salute to her for doing this, man. I mean, that's great. That's great. And she's cute. She's not like, I will give her that. She's cute. She's cute enough to be, she's cute enough. She's cute enough. I'll give her that. She's cute. You know, she's cute enough when she get made up and whatnot. But this 800,000 IG followers. <laughs> 800,000 IG follows is troubling, man. Listen, that that's that's concerning me, man. And make sure you take the $5 challenge, support the channel via PayPal, cash up with the Super Chat. We bringing you a documentary every night, man. Yeah. It... it, it. This girl already got a contract with Nike. Think about think about the type of person she is. I don't know her, but I'm troubled. I'm troubled. Look at the name of her book, Dear Black Girl. Look at the name of her book. The name of her book is Dear Black Girl. So you got 800,000 IG followers, and you've been in the league for Seven years. That's <laughs> you wrote a book called Dear Black Girls. Well, god damn it. You do know white girls buy shoes too. 
Salute to Ken P, man. Shout out to JL. You do know that white girls buy shoes too. If I'm Nike and I see this, I'm like, oh, man. She, she should have just named that book Dear Girls. Press one. She should have just named this book Dear Girls. Dear black girls, well, well, God damn. So you got 800,000 IG followers after seven years in the league. And listen, I, I'm not mad at this woman at all, man. I wish her the best, man. I wish her the best. It's just that, yo... Eric, let me see your resume. Let me see your resume. That's what I thought. This is Asia Wilson, and I got time today. Imagine the Las Vegas Aces playing the Mount Vernon Academy boys team. Those boys win by 30 points. Y'all just said a grown ass professional team playing against high school boys. Grown women <laughs> entertain. Yes, you will get beat by 30 points. Maybe 20, because y'all are professional basketball player y'all not a slow down the clock y'all not to move the ball and um and shorten the game i can't thank you enough for welcoming my teammates to the white house yeah. last year we had tons of fun and just seeing how much the game has grown from that moment yeah. i think for my question for you is like how can we continue to create opportunities for kids to not uh Wait for a white girl to come along named Caitlin Clark and ride her wave and shut the fuck up, sit back and ride Caitlin Clark's wave. And when the fucking Indiana Fever come and play your team, drop 50 and get your name out there while the whole country's watching. When Caitlin Clark come to town and the whole country's watching, drop 50. Press one. When Caitlin Clark come to town and the whole country's watching her play against your team, drop 50. That's how you get your name out there. Not be involved just in sports for their communities as well. I mean, it starts with seeing. Oh God, that woman was so stupid. I can't even stand to hear. Okay, this is on her own Colbert. Listen, man, I, 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 I'm not mad at this. Now, you've, uh, you've written a new book. This must yeah. be terribly exciting. Yeah. You got a new book here. It's called Dear Black Girls. Yeah, man. Hispanic girls buy shoes. Asian girls buy shoes. You should have just named the book Dear Girls. But you're a racial idolater and you named it Dear Black Girls. How to be true to you. Did you ever think... Did you ever imagine? And look at everybody clapping. This shit ain't nothing to clap about. 
imagine it. <laughs> when, when you were a young black girl, did you ever imagine you'd be writing a book? Not at all. And I'm dyslexic. So like telling a dyslexic kid that she will be able to write a book when she gets older, it would be like mind blowing. So I'm so proud out of this book. Uh, it's written in a journal form, so it's kind of like a Dear Diary, and I feel like people can really resonate with that. So I never would have thought I would be selling a book, particularly with my face on it. Like, thanks. Shout out to everyone that's buying it. Well, you look woo. awfully happy on the cover <laughs> of this book. So, <laughs> let's, so for, those, for those young black girls, what yeah. do you want them to get from this? What's the message? Ooh. Uh, what's the message for the black girls, man? that didn't buy your shoe that Nike put out. The shoe that Nike put out for you, even though it's not a signature shoe, they put a shoe out for you. None of these black girls bought it. What's your message for them? Ooh, my message would have to be just like, give yourself some grace and understand that there are gonna be days that may not be the greatest, uh, but you can still persevere no matter what. And just put one foot in front of the other and know that we're healing together, we're loving each other. And you know, I'm always here with you every step of the way. And the white man, no matter what the white man do, man, we just gotta overcome what, all this stuff the white man doing to us, man. You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? Today is the day. My first book, Dear Black Girls, is officially out in the world. Thank you to everyone who pre-ordered a copy for themselves. Sisters, daughters, friends, and even aunties. Writing this book has been a dream come true. And a way for me to share the moments and the people that helped shape me. I hope... Somebody said Barnes and Noble sales rank is twelve thousand nine hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, and that's why when I saw it, when I saw it was a New York Times bestseller, I was like, that don't mean nothing, man. New York Times has put it on the bestsellers list just because she's black. Dei shit, man. Um, So let's see what these crazy blacks are saying online. They don't understand how the world works. I should have played um Pastor Manning. <laughs> I gotta play Pastor Man. Somebody remind me to play Pastor Manning before it's all said and done, man. Somebody remind me to play Pastor Manning on the show tonight, man. Cause they don't. Sons don't understand how the world works. Nike trends after it's been released that they have signed Caitlin Clark to an eight-figure shoe deal with her own signature shoe. The best WNBA player, Asia Wilson, two-time champion and two-time MVP, doesn't have a Nike shoe deal. Well, she has a Nike shoe deal. She just doesn't have a signature shoe because you wouldn't buy one, Mr. Black Millionaires. There's no way in the world you would buy a pair of those shoes for your daughter. Look at this. I want you to look at this. I'll continue to say this forever. They don't want black people to have anything. <laughs> look how crazy black people are. Look how crazy they are, man. Look how crazy they are. Look how crazy these moon crickets are. I'll continue to say this forever. They don't want black people to have anything, no matter how much better we are than anyone else in anything. Shout out to Agent Wilson. You deserved something like this a long time ago. This is also why we got to stay on black sellouts. Yo, something is wrong with these people. Gatekeepers and bootlickers necks. Them weirdos get the fruits. It ain't nothing but bad people. The real ones who earn get nothing, though. 
Somebody wrote, somebody listed a listed probably like five percent of all the black people that got Nike shoe deals. Somebody went and listed five percent of the people that got Nike shoe deals. And here's the thing. Shout out to Osa, man. It doesn't matter. Even though you tell them, hey, man, look. Look at all these black people that got Nike shoes, signature shoes. It doesn't matter. Facts don't matter. It doesn't matter. They still, they like, Black, these black people don't care about facts and new information and shit like that. They just they they pick a narrative and they ride it to the fucking moon. LMAO and y'all worried about her salary in the WNBA white people gonna always make sure their people good <laughs> now they now you know you know you know it's getting ugly when black people start making fun of your appearance man now black people starting to make fun of Caitlin Clark's appearance it's getting ugly Please take the five dollar challenge via PayPal Cash Up with the Super J. One person so far tonight is taking the five dollar challenge on the People's Channel, your favorite channel, man. One person. That's crazy, man. Um, let's see. Look at her shoe. No one's. No one buys this shoe. No one buys that shoe. No one cares about that shoe. These people are crazy. These people are absolutely nuts. It's embarrassing, man. I ain't even gonna lie, man. Y'all black people are embarrassing us, man. Yo, where is her signature shoe, Nike? And that wasn't, clearly I wasn't the only one who felt like that. It sparked massive debate. I see that it went on all night and it is still going on, Callie. So talk to me. What do you think about this? Yeah, I just want to clarify that this call for Asia Wilson to get her own shoe is not new. And that was an argument that I saw a lot from people who are unfamiliar with the game. And it's what you mentioned previously. It's a double edge. It's pros and cons, right? We love the people who are coming in and they're so excited because of Caitlin Clark. But the problem is that they don't know the history and they're not that familiar with these topics that they're speaking on. So they're speaking. Our point exactly. <laughs> That's our point. That's why Asia doesn't have a shoe deal. Press one. That's our point. That's our point, ma'am. Speaking out of turn, if you will, and saying things that are untrue, fans have been calling for Asia to get a shoe for as long as I can remember, there's so much demand for it. I saw a lot of people arguing that she's not marketable. Um, and the irony of that was almost laughable because the same day that Caitlin Clark's shoe deal dropped, Time released their list of 100 most influential people. And Asia was a, like a headliner of that list. The Time Magazine most 100 influential people. 
They got to put some black people on there, man. Some fresh faces, man. They got to put some fresh face black people on there, but come on, man. Asia Wilson isn't one of the most hundred influential people in America. They just put her face on there because they need some black women, man. DEI, man. The tribute to her was written by Tom Brady, who I don't think we can argue is a goat and super marketable. Asia has shown consistent. Um, ma'am, Tom Brady is not marketable. When was the when was the last time any of y'all seen Tom Brady in a in a in a um in a commercial? Chat, when have any of y'all seen Tom Brady in a commercial? When was the last time? Salute to Mark Ishmael, man. Coming through. Okay, you say today. Somebody said five, six years ago. Tom Brady is not marketable like that. Just because he won a bunch of Super Bowls, he's not marketable. He don't move the needle, man. You would see him in more stuff if he was marketable. You know who's marketable? Shaq. Michael Jordan. Peyton Manning. The people who you see in the commercials marketing the stuff. Tom Brady is not marketable, man. He's a he's the greatest football player of all time, but he's not marketable. He has a boring personality. It has nothing to do with how many touchdown passes he's thrown. Listen, this is the thing black people don't, they don't understand the way the world works. Black people don't understand the way the world works. It You don't get, a company's not going to give you millions of dollars to market their brand because you got this award or that award. They're going to give you a million dollars to market their products because they think that you marketed it, it's going to help it fucking sell. Yes, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady always beat Peyton Manning. Tom Brady always knocked Peyton Manning out of the playoffs. Always broke Peyton Manning's heart. But guess what? Peyton Manning gets all the commercials. Because he has a better personality. He was a star in college. He was the first pick in the draft. Eli has more. Eli has more commercials than Tom Brady. This is what black people don't. That's why I say. That's why Pastor Manning said black people don't understand the world. They don't understand the way the world works, man. Nobody's going to give you a million dollars because you won the MVP. They're going to give you a million dollars because they because they think you can sell their product. Press one. Tom don't make nobody want to buy nothing. Tom don't move the needle like that.
he don't move the needle like that. And you know how you know? It's because when you watch TV, you don't see him in no fucking commercials. You know you see in commercials? Charles Barkley's old ass. Shaquille O'Neal. Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch got more commercials than Tom Brady. Press one. <laughs> Fucking Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> yeah, Barkley's all over the place with his comments and shit, but... Black people don't understand the way the world works. Listen, man, you can disagree all you want. Tom Brady is not all over your TV screen. And listen, that's that's not debatable, man. This is not debatable. It's not something I have to argue you about. Tom Brady's not over your TV screen because the people who make commercials, they look at the data, they look at the sales, they look at the goddamn focus groups. Do you understand they have focus groups before they even put a commercial out? They test it with, with, with focus groups to see, does this person move you? Does this person make you... Yeah, even Kenny Smith make a lot of money on commercials because he's he's next to Charles and Shaq. He get um he um he catch the residue off of Charles and Shaq, so he gets money off of Charles and Shaq just being this being their sidekick. Yeah, I haven't seen a Marshawn Lynch commercial in a while, but he still does. A, I've seen a lot. I've seen a very a, a, a lot of them over the years. Way more than Tom Brady. Serena Williams, she used to sell products. Black people don't understand the way the world works, man. They just don't understand it, man. It has nothing to do with your race. Uh, can you sell products? Same day that Caitlin Clark's shoe deal dropped, Time released their list of 100 most influential people. And Asia was a, like a headliner of that list. The tribute to her was written by Tom Brady, who I don't think we can argue is a goat and super marketable. Asia has shown consistently that she's charismatic. She's excellent. Two-time... MVP, Defensive Player of the Year. She's a back-to-back -back champion. She won in college with South Carolina. They have a statue erected in her honor. Like this woman. And so what? They gave her a shoe. It sold two pairs. She sold two pairs of the shoe they gave her. So they're not giving her a signature shoe. End of story. She got 800000 Instagram followers. Yo, do you understand that that's not even enough to get a brand and, and brand ambassador? Yo, if she wasn't in the WNBA, right, and she just had 800,000 Instagram followers, she couldn't even get nobody to, 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 to get her to endorse any brands. That's not enough. You need a million, two million, three million, four million, five million. For somebody to want to um, get you to make a, a IG post, pay you twenty thousand dollars to make an IG post. She got eight hundred thousand. Been in the league seven years. Woman 
could not be more marketable if she tried. And so for Nike to put her in the position where she then has to go on social media and kind of cool her fans and like urge them to be patient and almost like defend Nike, it's such a disappointment, but it's not a surprise because Nike has done it before. They've shown how they treat their excellent black women. I look back, obviously I'm a huge track fan. Allison Felix, is the most decorated female Olympian in track and field, period. 11 Olympic medals. Yo. They're saying Nike got something against black people. These people are crazy, man. Seven of them gold. When she got black women, I look back, obviously, I'm a huge shown how they treat their excellent black women i look back obviously i'm a huge track fan allison felix is the most decorated female olympian in track and field period 11 olympic medals seven of them gold when she got pregnant they offered her 70 percent less on her contract and when she pushed back they told her to know her place i am frustrated even like retelling that so to know that history of allison's from Nike. I can only imagine how things are happening behind closed doors with Asia. And so I hate that she's been placed in this position. Now she has to defend Nike and then her fans are placed in a position to defend how marketable she is. And that should never happen. For sure. And I mean, you mentioned uh, Allison Felix, but Nike also was not handling. So Nike racist because they didn't give Allison Felix. <laughs> Nike racist because they didn't give Allison Felix a, a, a shoe, right? <laughs> the track star, Allison Felix, right? <laughs> Guess who just signed a shoe deal with Nike last month? The little hood rat, man. The little hood rat, man. <laughs> Last year, man. Last year, the little hood rat signed a $20 million deal with Nike, man. Yo, if I was Nike, man, and I heard that black people was running around saying we racist, you lucky that this is you lucky that Nike is white people, man. If Nike was an Asian company or Arab company, they would cut all y'all, man. They would fire all y'all. Shakari got her own shoe. Shakari got her own shoe. Everybody know her name. Everybody knows her name. I think Angel Reese may get her own shoe. Yes, because Angel Reese is popular. Angel Reese is popular. Make sure everybody here hit the like button, man. If y'all not going to take the $5 challenge, at least hit the like button, man. At least hit the like button, man. So we can bring the panel on, man. So we can hit, so we can bring the panel on, man. We need 250 likes, man. Everybody hit the like button, man. Salute to um, Derek, man. Derek in the building, man.
This dude, George Trusty, said, <laughs> look at this guy, man. This guy's a clown, man. Look at this clown, man. You're a clown, man. Ain't nobody doing nothing to stimulate sexual assaults on Danger Reese, man. You can't make somebody sexually assault somebody, man. You can't. Do you understand that every star is goes through what Angel Reese goes through? Every famous person goes through what Angel Reese is crying about. Every 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 celebrity goes through what Angel Reese is crying about being sexualized and shit. Every every single famous person goes through that. It became an out. became an outspoken critic of the gender pay gap when you famously <laughs> tweeted this about how much LeBron James was making in 2018, writing 154. Think about how off code that is to be tweeting about what somebody else make. So she tweeted about what LeBron James was making. She was hating on LeBron James and how much money he made. So y'all don't see nothing wrong with this? This girl, before she was hating on Caitlin Clark, she was hating on LeBron James. She became an outspoken critic of the gender pay gap when you famously <laughs> tweeted this about how much LeBron James was making in 2018, writing, 154 million must be nice. We over here looking for a mill, but Lord, let me get back in my lane. <laughs> um, you got a lot of people talking about that, and and you say it actually helped you find your voice. Yes. I can't even put into words how powerful the black woman is. You just really feel like you're just the queen in everything that you do, and you don't let up to have a whole statue of myself in the South and bringing a franchise to a WNBA appearance in the finals. That same black girl that couldn't sleep in someone's house because of the color of her skin could be the exact same black girl that is playing for other black girls to look up to, to know that. Yo, this is cringy as fuck, yo. Do you find your voice? Yes. I can't even put into words how powerful the black woman is. You just really feel like you're just the queen and everything that you do and you don't let up to have a whole statue of myself in the South and bringing a franchise to a WNBA appearance in the finals, that same black girl that couldn't. She said having a statue of myself in the South. Like, what you mean the South? Every, like, she act like it ain't like, Yo, she act like if you go to the South, like you gonna get lynched by some white people or something. <laughs> I have a statue of me in the South. Well, God damn it, the, school, the college you went to that you played at and everybody cheered you on and they built you a statue, the predominantly white college you went to because you didn't go to HBCU, the predominantly white college you went to in the South built a statue for you. She be suddenly trying to like make it seem like white people racist and shit.
to find your voice. Yes. I can't even put into words how powerful the black woman is. You just really feel like you're just the queen and everything that you do and you don't let up to have a whole statue of myself in the South and bringing a franchise to a WNBA appearance in the finals. That same black girl that couldn't sleep in someone's house because of the color of her skin could be the exact same black girl that is playing for other black girls to look up to. She wished she was born in the 60s so bad, man. I know this girl wished she was born in the 60s, man. So she could have been part of the civil rights movement, man. Baby, you was born too late, man. The civil rights movement is over. Salute to Nick Tal Javon, man. He says, yo, I, I don't know how gliders are going to get themselves out of this mess. <laughs> Sons are giving carte blanche to morally indict gliders over anything and no pushback. Yeah, man, it, it's this is ugly, man. We we need seventy more likes, man. Give me them seventy more likes, man. I gotta um do something right quick. Give me them seventy more likes, man. I'll be back in a few minutes, man. Give me them seventy more likes so we can so we can um start the show when I get back. 